CC bubbles can be found under the simulation category. And if you've ever used this effect before, you might have thought it was kind of lame. The way that I've applied it in the past is by going up to layer new solid, call this bubbles and apply the effect to it. And it just generates these animated bubbles that are very simple and plain and not all that exciting. So if you've done it like me, then you've completely missed that this actually interacts with whatever you apply it to. So this is just a white layer. That's why my bubbles are white. But if I instead apply it to this photo of a fish in a fish tank, then all of the bubbles are going to be a different color. If I play it back, we have a lot more going on. So what exactly is happening here? Well, let me duplicate this layer and get rid of the effect on the lower copy. And it's a little hard to see, but there are bubbles floating on top of the image now, and they're interacting with the colors of the photo behind it. Now it's hard to see on especially these darker colors, but if we take a look at the controls, we can adjust how this looks. So if I go into CC bubbles, I'm gonna jump straight down to the bubble size first and just increase the size so that these are much bigger and we can see what's going on better. So here's a nice big bubble. As it's moving around, you can see that things are being distorted around that bubble, kind of like the CC lens effect, but on each and every single one of these bubbles. If I move around the scene, they show up all over the place and they interact with the pixels of the layer that they're applied to. So right here, you can see as this bubble moves across that green plant, that seaweed, and then into the water, it interacts and warps those pixels behind it and makes it look a lot more believable than if this was just pure white bubbles that are just really plain and kind of boring. Let's take a look at some more of the controls. I have a bubble amount, which just simply increases or decreases the amount of bubbles in the scene. So if I want just a few, I'll turn that down and play it back. Or if I want a lot, I'll crank that up and it will take longer to render. But because this is a simulation effect, it really can produce a lot of these instances and do it fairly quickly. Let me undo back to where we were. We have the bubble speed, so we can control how quickly these are moving up the screen. Or I could turn that down and make it go a lot slower. I could even go to a negative number if I wanted it to look like these bubbles were falling for some reason. But I'll set that back to one. We have the wobble amplitude and frequency, and this is just like wiggle on the wiggle expression. The amplitude is how much these bubbles are going to be allowed to wiggle back and forth, and the frequency is how quickly it's going to wiggle back and forth. So if I just crank this up so it's a big amplitude, then they're gonna be moving back and forth on the screen really quickly. It's basically just like a sine wave. And if I increase the frequency to say two, then they're gonna be moving back and forth twice as fast probably best to keep this at a lower number. And maybe increase the speed if you wanna make it look like they were getting shot out of something. We've already looked at the bubble size, so I could turn that down and maybe crank up the number of bubbles so they're much smaller and more believable to be inside of a fish tank. And play around with all these different controls to get something that you're happy with. Maybe something like that is more convincing. And then we have a couple of settings for how the bubbles actually look. So let me reset this to default and increase the bubble size again so we can see them nice and clearly. So focusing on this nice and big one right here, we have reflection type set to liquid. So this looks like an air bubble inside of liquid where we can pretty much see straight through it in the center and then it fades into a more distorted reflective view around the outside of the bubble. But if I change this to metal, then it's gonna turn into something that looks a little bit more like a solid bubble, something that's filled, not just an air pocket where there is no water. And you can especially tell that as this passes over the fish. See how the edges aren't being distorted in the same way? It's basically flipping the pixels upside down for what it's passing over, leaving the center of the bubble unaffected. Let me change that back to liquid for now and then take a look at the shading type. It's defaulted to fade inwards, so that's where this tapering from the edge inwards is happening. It's fading into an unaffected version of what's behind it. But I could change that to fade outwards and then the opposite is going to happen. The inside of the bubble is what will be distorted and it will fade out to being unaffected. So that's what it looks like with the liquid reflection type. But if I change it to metal, you can see the slight difference. So pixels are upside down and not really distorted in any other way when set to metal and when on liquid, it's going to bulge it out and warp it more like that CC lens effect. Next up under the shading type, we have lighten, which will just make everything lighter, like the lighten blend mode. We also have darken, like the darken blend mode. 
as well as none, where it doesn't do any blending whatsoever. And then we get a really good view of what's happening with these bubbles. So if I back this up, again, we're set to liquid. You can see just how much that is distorting the pixels behind each bubble. And if we set it to metal, we get less distortion and more of just pixels being flipped. So the seaweed right here is upside down compared to what it is behind it. It does have a little bit of lens distortion, but not nearly as much as the liquid setting. So those are all of the controls of this effect, but I'm gonna show you how you can set this up in a way that it works on a single adjustment layer and applies it to everything underneath it without the need for duplicating things. So I'm going to delete this layer, turn my photo back on, and make an adjustment layer by going up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and we'll call this Bubbles. I'll apply the effect to it, and it's going to make everything transparent except for the bubbles. Now there's no blend mode option in here that allows me to put those pixels back behind these bubbles. So I'm going to use the CC composite effect and put that right after CC bubbles. This effect takes the unaffected version of whatever you apply it to and recomposites it however you set it up. And on an adjustment layer, that means anything below this layer is what's going to be composited. It's important that I uncheck RGB only, but then I lose the bubbles. What I need to do is change composite original from in front to behind. And now those bubbles are appearing on top of that original layer. And I could even do something like add in some text and I'll put that below the adjustment layer. And now those bubbles are going to interact with it as well. You can see it especially right here. As I move this around, it's actually taking that pixel information all from one adjustment layer. And from here, I could even make them a little bit more pronounced by adding a curves effect or anything that allows you to adjust brightness right after CC bubbles. I'll just increase this. And now I'm seeing them a little bit more in the dark areas and it's a little bit more pronounced in these brighter areas as well. Now I could have gone to the shading type and changed this to lighten, but that does kind of overdo things and we lose a lot of that color information. So I think this is a better technique for being able to create more controlled looking bubbles. But that's really all you need to know to understand and effectively use CC Bubbles. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.